afternoon. I feel a little bit lost here among all these experts because I'm going to talk about something that doesn't exactly make you look like an expert, about clumsiness. Clumsy people get attention, but not the kind they really want. Clumsy means you can do certain things, but that something just doesn't look right. Many of us are experts on clumsiness to various degrees um, and never make it here to TED. So I think it's time to bring this defect out into the open. I am clumsy. I've fallen off my bike, on my bike, under my bike, you name it. I've fallen into a fish tank in a store and um, I have been featured in a number of funny home videos on skiing. Whenever I try to learn any kind of movement, I experience this massive brain freeze. Huh? Especially if people talk and move at the same time. You see, they think that's helpful, but it really is not. I just stand there like a frozen chicken lost in space. But even chickens have dreams, don't they? I've always wanted to dance. And my two sisters actually practiced dancing for a while. But somehow, the motion gene seems to have passed me by. And then, six years ago, I went with my partner, who lives in the US, to a party in New York City. He said, you know, the party host says that a hooper is going to be there. A hooper. I had no idea what he was talking about, but then probably neither did he. And so we arrived, and there was this beautiful young lady, swift and nimble and flexible, dancing with a hoop. Oh, a hula hooper. She asked everyone if they wanted to try it, including me, but of course I declined. Why would I want to make a fool of myself in front of that bathing suit goddess? And then, two years later, in 2008, I was becoming more and more exhausted due to the hospitality of my office chair. My body was saying it very clearly to me that it was time to change something. I needed to find a form of exercise. But what kind of exercise would be suitable for a nerd who doesn't want to go anywhere to exercise? And then I remembered that my mother had a plastic children's hoop. When I found it, I discovered another thing about myself. I had obviously grown a little bit older as well. But that's a plus, because when you grow a little bit older, you tend to care a little bit less about what other people think about you. <laughs> so I took my hoop, went straight to the yard in front of all the neighbors, including the one who always knows best, and started practicing. It took me a whole week before I was able to spin the hoop around my waist. But something happened in my body. It persisted. It was having such a wonderful time that it outvoted my brain and its critical ideas about clumsiness. In other words, I was having so much fun that I no longer cared what anyone thought, including my critical self. And that's when my hooping obsession started. As a clumsy person, I decided that if I was going to do this, I was going to do it right. At that time, the US was the hooping capital of the world, and the European hooping scene was only just emerging. So I actually became one of the first European Columbuses to have crossed the Atlantic to personally meet the best hoop dancers of that time. Some of them are among the nicest and most humble people I have ever met, and I would really like to thank them for all their kindness and support. For me, their most important contribution was that of encouragement, and mine was that of patience. Patience means giving your body enough time to be able to figure things out. As a clumsy person, I'm very slow at learning things like this. Elements I see my own students perform in a matter of minutes took me months and sometimes even years. Nevertheless, my body is making progress. 
It has become a lot more intelligent in terms of rhythm, coordination, and even memory. I certainly felt I had accomplished a lot and that those things were not signs of clumsiness but of bodily intelligence. But there's always a but somewhere, isn't it? I became more skillful, that's true, but I didn't really become elegant. And isn't that what every dancer wants? Elegance, beauty of movement? And then there was this sad realization that I had not achieved it, despite years of hard work and time spent with the hoop. So what is this quest for perfection of movement, this swan business? It is the ultimate vision of grace, and uh, as inspiring as it is, it also gets to you time and time again. It devalues everything you have achieved and always brings you back to the beginning. It means you can do certain things, but that something just doesn't look right. So where does that leave me? What should I be like? Elegant, like someone else? Like who? Movement professionals? Are they necessarily the only role model for someone like me? Someone who has never danced? They're mostly younger than me and have a long history of dance, fitness, the circus arts, sports. They have this amazing talent and ability which has developed hoop dance into the art it is today. But I think there's one thing that I don't think many of them can understand. The feeling in your body after it discovers that after a lifetime of embarrassment and fear and clumsiness, it can dance and move in a hoop. So after four years of working with that kind of body, I feel that it's now also me who could teach people something something about clumsiness and how to make it dance. <laughs> so I also started looking around for a different kind of inspiration. I soon found people who were different, uh, not that good, older, not perfect looking, those outside the spotlight. So who are these people? This is Heike from Germany. She's nearly 60 years old. She's one of the founders of German hooping and switched employment where she was not fulfilled for a full-time hooping business with less money and more happiness. When she dances, she is more elegant and youthful in her hooping than many of the younger dancers I have seen. This is Joyce from New Zealand. She's also nearly 60 years old. She started hooping in India without any kind of movement knowledge whatsoever, except a few years of yoga. And as you can see, she's very talented. She managed to pull this off in two years. I hope I can do it one day. Some people close to her do not really understand her hooping, though. They feel she is too old. And she is often reminded of that by the onlookers in the park as well, when she is doing amazing things like this. This is 77-year-old Alan from Great Britain. Alan has been hooping and attending various hooping events for six years. He has actually been hooping longer than some British master teachers. This is 61-year-old Pam from North Carolina, USA. Pam suffers from severe osteoporosis and has picked up hooping as a means of fighting it with exercise and joy. She is talented for what we call twin hooping. Not only that, though, she herself has recorded the biggest online video collection of free, video, free videos in this discipline. In this way, she generously educates the rest of the hooping community worldwide. These are just a few of the dancers who deserve credit for their immense dedication to the art. They're diligent and persistent, but can go unnoticed and unmentioned because they're not the swans. 
Society wishes to convince us that everything is over for you when you reach 40. That everything you embark on in terms of sports after 25 is just too late. That responsible adults should not play. That you will automatically look ridiculous at everything if you're too thin, too fat, too ugly, too clumsy, too something. This is not true. Your fears and other people's prejudices should not stop you in your quest. Have the courage and try. You can achieve a lot. When you reach middle age like me, you ask yourself the question, what kind of person you wish to be when you grow old? I showed you the people I'm inspired by. To me, they're far from old. They're young at heart, they like to have fun, they live one day at a time, they're dedicated to their dance, and they have overcome their own and other people's prejudices. Many times, we want to go for something but don't dare to. Sadly, what often holds us back is not the fear of failing, but the fear that other people would see us fail. Some talents are given to us by the higher power from the very beginning. They boost our confidence because they're clearly present and visible to ourselves and others. Some talents, however, are inscribed into us in the form of wishes. I feel that this higher power wants us to realize those talents when we mature enough in life to do so. My wish was to dance. What is yours?
Aloha, 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 aloha